Hunt 41 is a celebration of American waterfowl hunting. The 41 species of ducks and geese are the roadmap for us to tell the stories of the various regions, styles of hunting, and most importantly, the people that are representing this great pursuit of ours. This is the original series, The Chase for the 41. And, I, and I, it gave me a great appreciation for what we have here and how important it is. You know, Arkansas is kind of the northernmost state that doesn't freeze up for all, all, all ducks. We have, we have the agriculture with rice, which is a great carbohydrate for ducks. And, and we have the fields that are easy to flood. We have the bottomland hardwoods like this that the mallards come in to eat the acres. We got it all right here. We got the water, we got the resources, we got the habitat. And no other state, I think, especially for mallard, has everything right here in Eastern Arkansas. Welcome to another episode of Hunt 41. When you say Arkansas and duck hunting, the first thing that comes to mind is the rice and duck capital of the world in Stuttgart. Hunters travel from all over the country to experience this century-old tradition among the heartbeat of American waterfowl culture. Duck hunters across the country dream of experiencing a hunt in the green timber of Arkansas. tight hole and they would hit over the hole and just break their backs and just start back going just 90 degrees just straight down like this every group you just be like <laughs> Did you, did you rewatch them to see? They just sat here and they just turned and went straight down to the hole. Oh, man, that was so cool. Yeah. <laughs> they just like. <laughs> Tony, getting the mallard on the mallard strap. That's the thing is they like when you're, you know when you're a field they freaking just glide in they do it pretty but it's like when they get here they get over that spot they want to go and they just like dump it back. <laughs> yeah. Today is, is the hottest, and then tomorrow it starts dropping back down to like, I want to say, uh, like Thursday night is like, the, the low is like 30. Yeah, like I said, I had no intent. Like in college, like a crappy junior college in Memphis, no plan whatsoever, like I was just going to school. I was always a guy with a cell phone taking pictures of people doing stuff or holes or whatever else, stuff like that, and then 
just got a camera for fun and then just posted stuff on Instagram, like not trying to do literally anything with it at all. And we were already doing this and then I just met another guy that wanted to hire me to do stuff in the same setting, doing the same exact thing. It just worked out, you know, worked out perfect. Like in a transition from a week, I went from like, oh, this is like someone's actually paying me to like video some hunt stuff to all of a sudden it was like, go out to the woods, do the exact same thing, make money doing it, sometimes get to shoot. I can see how people are addicted to it. Yeah. After that, right. how they decoy in like that. For sure. You always get everybody like, oh, you gotta go to Arkansas, you gotta go to Arkansas. I get it now, you know? Yep. Like, it's just like a whole <laughs> different level. Like, now you know why guys go crazy. About it. pungent odor and a burning sweet taste. I think people come here as a destination, you know, where, where before people would come to Max and then like, oh, well, let's go next door to R&T. But like Butch back in the day was like, he made his tools that he car he turned calls with, you know, so he's like turning with that stuff right there. All this, I mean, Butch was missing me couple of digits. The story goes, he like showing someone how he lost the one on the bandsaw and lost another one. Like, uh, I, I don't know what the truth is there, but it doesn't sound good. This is the J. Stevens call workshop. I, I mean, that's what I would call it. The J. Stevens stuff is really, that's his, inside his head, that's his brain child there. And I, it's been building for years. So, I mean, he took r &T over from Butch but he never wanted to take over the style or the shape, re redo the shape of the call because of Butch, you know? Like, so r &T was, like, Butch started in 76, so John came around in 99, and um, he wasn't gonna jump in and start, well, we're gonna reshape and redesign the way these calls look, or the barrels, you know? Because people knew that, that, you know, they could look at that and say, that's an r &T. You can just flip through like books and look at old photographs like of these old call makers and see where John has borrowed bits and pieces of design elements and made them his own. That's art and there's no original ideas. You, you get, you're influenced by something, something like turns your crank and then you're like, oh, it, it, turns, it makes a spark. And then you're like, I'm gonna make that long.
waited for since 2000. That's mine. I've had my hands on it. That's a Halloween Mondo. <laughs> you know, check your calls before you let your kids blow them. John's like, nope, can't do that. It's like, come on, dude. Usually this was our, this was, this is it right here. Those Sony's that um, you put the tape in, you video till the tape ends. When you get back to camp and everybody wants to see the footage, you say no. Well, that one looks cool. <laughs> Blake wasn't even a cameraman when we hired him. Well, that's the cool thing is that he's, I mean, he's done a bunch of stuff, so he's, uh, he's had to learn to wear a bunch of hats, you know, do a bunch of different things besides. He, he knew a little photography, but I'm saying you've gotten a lot better probably since you started, didn't you? Oh, yeah. For still photography and videoing. First catalog we did, Blake worked for a different company in Little Rock, Peerless Photography, and he did some catalog layouts. And just at some point, we had him doing so much stuff, we just said, now why don't you come work for us and doing, you know, all the graphics and stuff. And when he started running a video camera, you're our first, I guess, full yeah, time. I, did not. I think we've been ahead of our time on some things. As far as waterfowl world goes, definitely. Especially the quackhead stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, man, I got friends that can shoot a 410 and kill one at three times and kill it dead. And I mean, that's, that's a skill. There's no doubt. That, and there's people that I, I don't, I don't hate on them at all. That you know like to shoot them high, that kill them. I mean, yeah. that's just their thing. It's marksmanship. Ours is just trying to see how close you get. You know, that's, to me, that's what's fun. Here at the World Championship Duck Calling Contest and the Wings Over the Prairie Festival, as I mentioned earlier, this is number 88 for us. We hope to do for another 88 years. Behind my shoulder, you'll see all the companies that, that deal with duck hunting and, and the duck hunting industry. They want to be a part of this festival because they, they, they know that they've got duck hunters from all over the United States. They come into town to duck hunt, but they also come into town to listen to the World Champion Duck Callers uh, buy for that championship trophy. All these guys and girls behind me, they're all enjoying themselves here in Stuttgart, getting a chance to hunt some of the timber and some of the rice fields around the town here. Uh, they're coming out with ducks every morning. So it's great, great time to be in Stuttgart, great time to be in Arkansas and be a part of this uh, World Championship Duck Calling Conference. The farther you go that way, the shallower it gets, of course. But, you know, with the wind will switch, you, know, you want them in your face, but when conditions don't let you, you go with what you got. Because we can shoot them in the egg hole just like we do in the face. <laughs> Keith is the state chairman for Arkansas. And in Ducks Unlimited, the, one of the most important roles of the organization is to be the state chairman. In Arkansas, because of its waterfowling heritage and, be, and we do a great deal of conservation delivery in this state, pretty important position. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's an honor to be with, with Keith mm -hmm. in the woods.
Kill them. Yeah. Kill them. Arkansas, Mississippi, yeah. uh, Kentucky, Tennessee, basically, you know, within a few hour range of where I live. But it's hard to leave Arkansas. Once you taste that perfect, brisk, sunny, bluebird morning with a little wind, the show is on, watching green heads majestically fall through the timber. Sometimes so close, they're truly in your face, landing at your feet. You can kill a lot more ducks. You'll have a greater hunt. Instead of going someplace and getting there at four o'clock in the morning, waiting two and a half hours to shoot, and saying, I was here first. The majority of these people have been coming here since 1960. 50, 60, 70 year old people are still duck hunting. So, who was here first? The guy that just showed up or the guy that's been here for 50 plus years? What's left of us old guys, we go every day whether we kill a duck or not and then because it's gonna be a day that they're here. And when they're here, we're going to be here. And that's the best part. Watching a mallard come down through the trees, dodging limbs with perfect accuracy, is a sight to be seen at least once in your duck hunting life. You know, I've been, I've been a volunteer since I was 18. I'm 59 years old. The best, one of the best things I can say about Ducks Unlimited, especially for Arkansas, is it gives you an extended family. You know, the, the, the social atmosphere of, your, of the extended family. And, and uh, basically anywhere I, I travel in Arkansas, I know somebody in that county, you know, and if, if I have a problem within an, at least an hour's phone call away, somebody can come help me out if I need it. And look at that. And if you enjoyed duck hunting, you need to be a member of Ducks Unlimited. For $35, we're helping ensure that you get to go duck hunting and there's a duck to shoot at. Last year we raised over $2.1 million in, uh, from our events. We're one of the top 10 companies you know, as far as charitable organizations that put their money back to the natural resource. Very big bulk of the money goes back to the habitat and to the ground. And you know, we're concerned with the breeding areas in Canada and North United States. You know, and that's where, where a lot of the program is that we spend a lot of money. The state of Arkansas spends a lot of money in Canada. Yeah. We'd like the season never stops. I mean, at a duck call shop, the season never stops. The killing stops, but the work doesn't. I've been drawing this since I was in grade school. Okay. Like, grade school, like, this is, I've, I've drawn this all my life. I mean, he would make a pretty good decal. Yeah, there's a good one. He's a, uh, whatever makes me happier, keeps me from doing what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> Procrastination at its line. This is Emily's domain now. He's like upped our 
game as far as what we can do for custom calls, like the multicolored painting. This one took me about two hours per call. And there's, I mean, there's no engraving on that one. That's all just freehand. Whole Zodiac painted. series. That was kind of what started the multicolor yeah. painting stuff. We used to say, oh, can we, you know, like people were like, hey, can I get my logo in two colors? No, you can't, because no one wanted to mess with it. trying to do it. Um, but she's figured out how to engrave it and paint the engraving to get what she wants out of it. And no other state, I think, especially for mallards, has, and I know because our, our kill numbers represent that we kill twice as many mallards as anybody else, and not more than that, has everything right here in eastern Arkansas. That's also a great responsibility. The Arkansas Game and Fish Commission has done a tremendous job of managing the, the, our resources. I was fortunate to be a past commissioner of several years ago, and the current commission is doing a fabulous job of managing these natural resources, getting the public involved, outreach to them, understanding what, how we got to manage these these uh, public hunting areas. I'm very, I'm a, always a glass half full guy. I, I think our future, our, our days are even looking better in the future. We got to stay vigilant and we got to stay after it and, and continue to do what we're doing. But if we ever lose these bottomland hardwoods in Arkansas, it could be over for, for mallards. It could be a, it could be a very devastating thing like we've seen in other parts of the country where we've lost habitat to urban sprawl in South Texas and other things. So I think it's, it's really our responsibility to make sure we continue to make Arkansas the heart, heartthrob or the heartbeat of mallards in this Mississippi flyway. It's all here in Arkansas, waiting for you to experience. From all of us at Hunt 41, this is American Waterfowl. Don't get me wrong, I love shooting ducks, and I love cooking ducks, and I love eating ducks. But I sure do like watching them, too. <laughs> well, y'all come back. You don't rewind the tape and show them the footage because the chances of you recording back over the tape are very good. And uh, I never did that. I never did that.